The Fantasy Six-Pack Hour. With your hosts, Joe Bob. Ah, you're awful. <laughs> and A.J. Applegar. It's Sin Shu Sin Shu. It's a mouthful. All right, all right. Welcome back to the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. My name is Joe Bond, founder of Fantasy Six Pack dot net. With the with me as always, my trusty co-host AJ Ebergarth. How's it going, bro? Pretty good. I don't know if you can see that, but I, yeah, yeah, I can. It's good. You're, good. You're good. You can't see me today. I uh, decided to turn my camera off. I'm uh, I'm not feeling so hot, so I might be muting myself to sneeze or cough or something off camera so i figured you guys didn't want to watch that um so we just went with a still image of of my this beautiful face of mine um (laughs) uh yeah man so tomorrow's thanksgiving man happy thanksgiving aj happy thanksgiving to everyone who's listening and you know who who reads the site Um, absolutely uh turkey day is one of my one of my favorite holidays of, of the year, I feel like, mostly for the food, um, also for and the your football. nasty cranberry sauce. Yes, yes, I remember. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't even know if I, I don't know if I did end up actually eating any last year, though. I don't remember. I maybe I did. I, who knows? If you forgot, it's a sign that your body is telling you it's gross. Yeah, exactly. It's like <laughs> you don't eat this. If you can't remember having it, you don't need it inside of me. It's disgusting. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, we're headed up to, to Jody's family like we always do and doing things there. And then my mom's staying back here cooking a little mini Thanksgiving dinner for herself. And, you know, we'll eat a little something with her, um, you know, with just the, the family here. So be a good time. Lots of food. Uh, hopefully I feel better tomorrow because right now I just don't really feel like eating much, but all right, man, uh, let's, let's get on with this and go to our trusted beer of the week. Mm, Beer. Um, so I'm, I'm going with one that, that you had just a couple of weeks ago that the stone pack that I usually buy switched up in the stores and they included this one in it. It's the stone fear movie lions double ipa um i give this a four and a quarter on on untapped it's really good man it's a it's a pretty heavy ipa not gonna lie but uh it's just it's one that i I definitely like it's actually an un i think it's an un is it unfiltered yeah it's an unfiltered ipa so um yeah i don't know there's something about the unfiltered ones that for the most part I, i seem to i seem to enjoy them what you got uh, tonight I am drinking the original, regular Southern Tier Pump King. I don't know if that's coming in okay, but uh, I had their their Nitro, yeah, I guess a month or so ago when we were doing shows in October. Oh yeah, I remember and, that. Uh, yeah, the Pump King. I, I really like that, but this is <clears throat> this is the original, very good. Uh, I figured. You know, you can't have Thanksgiving without pumpkin pie, so I'm drinking a pumpkin beer in honor of that. And, sure. Uh, pretty much after this holiday, I, I'm guessing pumpkin is pretty much gone for the year. So no, it's all like winter spices and stuff like that. So which are good than yeah. good than their own. So yeah, I'm a big winter beer fan. But... I I don't like the pumpkin stuff, so I like the winter the winter ales a little bit more if I had to choose one. Yeah. So. Moving on, we're we're gonna uh, do a a slightly different show. You know, still doing our little headlines, but not as many. Still going through some injuries, but uh, we'll get into to some Turkey Day award predictions, which will be fun, uh, and then our usual picks at the end. But um, it's finally here. No more bye weeks. It's finally here, man. It's I'm about so damn time. <laughs> I, so guess, I know, man. You know, it's something you got to deal with every year. But I had a uh, – last week, like like we kind of said, was a pretty rough one going in with all the bye weeks. You know, there was only the four teams, which is pretty standard. But just the, 
the number of players we were missing with all the injuries as well just really made it it was kind of a low scoring week man unless you just had like one or two of those guys that just blew up <clears throat> uh, the guy we'll mention next um then you probably didn't do very well <laughs> Uh, I, I had a bunch of scores in the 90s and, and actually won. It was pretty crazy uh, just because nobody, nobody really performed. So speaking of big time, big time uh, players, Lamar Jackson. I mean, my goodness, <laughs> this dude is incredible. Uh, there's really – Nothing else you can say, man. It's just eh. he's blowing up. Uh, you know, he he just he lit up the Patriots a couple weeks ago. Uh, this past week on on Monday Night Football, embarrassed the Rams. I mean, almost ran for a hundred yards. He only threw for like I, I want to say it was like ninety five yards, with five touchdowns or something crazy like that. Like this is absurd. Um, yeah, I, I mean. You know, for the longest time, it was, oh, Russell Wilson's the, the front runner for the MVP. Dak got his name in the, in, in contention there with, with a, a good season. Um, but I think at this point, right, it's got to be Lamar. Like, he's got to be the front runner at this point. I mean, do you agree or? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this guy has just really taken the reins since they were finally turned over to him last year and, and has done nothing but succeed and, and get better. Um, I mean, it. it's really amazing to me how well he's done against these big teams that you would think, you know, most of them typically have been able to shut down opposing quarterbacks um, or, or at least keep them in check, but nobody can keep him in check. I mean, he's such a threat to run the ball, to throw the ball. I mean, that that was the big knock is that he can't even throw the ball. Okay, yeah, this game he didn't have a lot of yards, but he got yards that mattered towards the end zone. I, I mean, that's that's all you need. I mean, I I just I just think we're seeing something that we haven't really seen before. And the comparison that I would make not to a football player but to uh, Zion Williams in college basketball because he came in and there was no one else you could really compare him to from the sport and, and, and basically looking at how he just dominated at his position. Um, you know, granted Duke is always a monster powerhouse team, but he, he had, good surrounding cast, I guess, around him there in, in Duke. And Lamar has a good surrounding cast with him here. They've got a, a run-first offense, but they're just dominant. Yeah, they really did a good job of pretty much tearing down that offense when Joe Flacco was there and, and after he left, um, just totally ripping it down and, and making it – Lamar Jackson's offense, you know, not trying to fit Lamar into a mold, into an offense that didn't really fit his skill set. Um, they went out and got guys like, um, like Hollywood Brown, and those just those little speedster guys, right? That that really play yeah. into Lamar's game perfectly, and it spreads the field out for him. And when it does, man, and there's just not anything open, he's not going to force the ball. And you see that from his interceptions; he's only got five on the year. I mean, he's got as many touchdowns as Russell Wilson. Yeah. I mean, and the the passer rating is like less than a point less than Russell Wilson. It's eleven points more than Dak Prescott. I mean, it's it's insane uh, what he can do. And then I'm gonna flip to the next slide here. The rushing yards. He's going to obliterate Michael Vick's record of over a thousand yards rushing in a season for a quarterback. Yeah. Obliterate. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I think at this point, like, I don't know how you do not give him the MVP. Like, he would literally have to, to just, I mean, he, he would have to have like three or four just miserable games in a row. And I just, at this point, the way I've seen him play, I don't see it happening. So I don't, I don't think I do either. I mean, 
he is the first quarterback, you know, that I know of at least in recent days or years, I guess, technically, to beat both teams that were in the Super Bowl the year before, if you think about it. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm not sure. I didn't I, there's really probably look at that. other people that have done it. I don't have any kind of stats in front of me on that issue, but he beat New England and a very, you know, tough drag him down, knock him out game. And then he just walked all over the Rams. I mean, dude, it was embarrassing. The Rams, the Rams just didn't look like they wanted to be there after a while. And I don't blame them. Oh, no, they probably did. They're like, all right, whatever. Why do we have to play 60 minutes? The game's over. Like we're not yeah. doing anything. I mean, he didn't even play in the fourth quarter of that game. <clears throat> None of the starters did. I actually yeah. saved one of my one of my matchups because I was playing against Mark Ingram and Mark Andrews, and I was up by like thirty some points, and the guy got within like twenty nine and a half, and then they benched all the starters, and I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> it's pretty phenomenal. So, uh, yeah, kind of saved my butt that they blew him out. <clears throat> so, you know, all of this talk, right, and then. I start hearing on Sirius XM radio, I think it's Fantasy Alarm, I start seeing on Twitter all over the place that there is legit talk that people are talking about Lamar Miller being Lamar Miller, Lamar Jackson. I do that all the time. Lamar Jackson being a first round fantasy football pick next season. <sighs> I don't I don't, I, I don't know, man. It I I get the argument, right? I get the argument. Like his season pace, the slide up right now. The season pace is 3,500 yards passing, 35 touchdowns passing, seven interceptions, 1,275 rushing yards, and nine touchdowns. Now, let's think about it. If there was a running back who had 1,275 rushing yards and nine touchdowns, that running back would be a first round pick. Now, he does it, and he gets all the yeah. passing stats on top of it. I mean, I see it. I really do. But I want to get your take on it. I absolutely see it. And it's not going to surprise me one bit to see it happen. Um, Especially in something like a Scott Fishbowl. Like, he will be... Well, yeah. Take take flex leagues. Take flex leagues out of it. Super flex leagues out of it. That's not. That doesn't count. I'm talking your standard one quarterback, twelve team league. You know, would you legit take him? You know, end of first round, early second round, or what? Like, would you do it? Yeah, I mean, if he's if I have a late first round pick and he's still sitting there on the turn. I'm taking him in the second round. Um, but he might not be sitting there. I mean, that's the problem. I, I think based on this season, he's he's going to be like next year's Pat Mahomes. Um, he's just going to completely dominate the off-season talk uh, and, and like pre-draft season talk is really where I'm going with that. And... and you know, that's that's what's going to happen. You know, everybody is just going to jump on this bandwagon and and go with it. I mean, the only bad game he's had is the Pittsburgh game. And, you know, he had 161 passing yards, one touchdown, and three interceptions. Uh, I don't have the rushing stats for, from that game, but he only had, you know, in the Yahoo League that I'm looking at, he only had 15.34 points. His next worst game was at KC. So both road games. But then you look at the road games he's done since then, and it's at Cincinnati, or I'm sorry, at Seattle, at Cincinnati, and then at the Rams. And he's just, the Seattle game was the, the worst of those three. The other two were huge games. But that's just it, you know. He's he doesn't need to throw for three hundred yards. 
because he's getting 300 yards total, you know, or, or thereabouts. And it's better because he's getting so many rushing yards. I mean, that counts for more. I saw, I saw Ray Flowers on Twitter, you know, kind of go off in this rant where he's like, I think rushing yards for quarterbacks should be worth less or whatever. And I'm going, I mean. How are you going to do that? I, I mean, you can. You you legit can I think I think you can figure out a way to split it up especially in like my fantasy leagues and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I mean it would have to be a custom setting, and that's stupid because no one's if if that's your league setting, you're only doing that to punish somebody else who drafted Lamar before you did. Yeah, you're basically that's punishing the guys, and you're basically making. You know, Lamar, not totally irrelevant, but you're making Lamar and Josh Allen and, you know, Trubisky, if he ever gets his head out of his ass, um, and those types of guys, kind of irrelevant at this point. Because, like, so much of their value comes really from their legs. Their yeah, it's it's tough, man. Like, I, I don't I don't totally agree with it. I see where he's coming from a little bit, but I, I, I don't really I don't really agree with it. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't go that route. Um I just don't think that's fun. Um I mean, you know, we see it every year, though. There's always one quarterback, right, that, like, just kind of balls out. And, like, everybody goes absolutely bonkers for him the next year. And this year, it's, just, this year it's Lamar Jackson. I mean, it is what it is. People are going to go all out for him. Um, you know, it's interesting, right? So, I had, I, had, um, I had Keith put together a slide of, like, the top 10 fantasy quarterbacks um, seasons. Uh, he went as far back as 1998 with Steve Young. Um, now, right now, Lamar is on pace for 28.06 fantasy points per game. Um, last year, if my computer would go faster, it was Patrick Mahomes that was at this crazy rate, right? He, but between... Oh man, my computer is just being dog slow. Between week one and week sixteen, Patrick Mahomes, I think, had a twenty six twenty six point six average. The next closest quarterback was Ben Roethlisberger, twenty one point eight. So a good what five points more. Um, Lamar is a good five points ahead of Russell Wilson. I mean, so it's like the same thing. Yeah. And now you're looking you're looking at Patrick Mahomes this year. And look, he's not bad, but he's in the middle of the pack as far as average, right? Not middle of the pack. As far middle of the pack as far as like, you know, he's with the rest of the good quarterbacks. Average per game, Patrick Mahomes is a twenty one point eight. Patrick Mahomes this year was going number two. In in the second round of every is is what I meant, number two. He was going in the second round of almost every draft I was in. And are you happy with twenty one point eight points per game for Patrick Mahomes? Absolutely. Look at where you got Patrick Mahomes in 2018. Look at where you got Lamar Jackson in 2019. Look at where you probably got Peyton Manning in 2013, Tom Brady in 27, like Aaron Rodgers in 2011. Like I don't know the ADPs of these guys, that, you know, that far back, but I know for a fact that Patrick Mahomes was like barely drafted last year. Lamar Jackson was going like QB 20 early in drafts, like early in like if you're talking like June and July. Um, he crept up the board near the very end, but it still wasn't like, you know, he was the top five quarterback going, he was a value. And to me, that is why I'm not doing it. You know, I'm thinking like next year, right? Like Kyler Murray is probably going to be a top 12 quarterback, but I'd rather have somebody like Kyle Murray, Kyler Murray, who's going to go in around like eight or nine. It could potentially be this year's Lamar. Than taking Lamar and have him go back to the mean and get my running backs, my receivers that I know I need to get because I need more of them. Yes, Lamar is awesome. And if you hit on him, you hit on one of these like stud quarterback years, it makes a huge difference. But they don't always happen, you know? True, but. I, I don't know. I still think that he's just he's just shown something that we haven't seen before. 
We said that from Pat Mahomes last year, and he has regressed well, to the mean this year. Yeah, but he the was good mean he's still a, he's still above, way above average. But if yeah. you were taking Patrick Mahomes, were you expecting twenty one point eight points per game at a quarterback from him? No, you were expecting twenty five. Expecting you were expecting twenty five at least a game. Yeah. Now he's had those games, but he hasn't had those games either. That's my point. Lamar efficiency, the quarter, the yeah, you gotta, these NFL you gotta, defenses yeah. will figure him out. They're not going to a hundred percent stop him, but they will yeah. figure him out. Plus, you're gonna see like offensive line will change for him, running backs will change for him, receivers will change for him. The defense may not be as good to keep him on the field as much for him next year. There's oh, so yeah. many variables that play into Lamar Jackson not repeating this next year that I will not take him in the first or the second round next year. Y'all can have him. I will load up at receiver and running back like I do every single year and wait till 8, 9, 10 to take my quarterback, and I'll be perfectly fine. Yeah. I, I mean, I agree that you can wait and get a quarterback <clears throat> later. We talk about that every year, but – He's got Ingram there. He's gonna have Hollywood and and Gaskin there for years to come. You know, at least three more years for their rookie. Deal. I mean, he's got Mark They're Andrews, gonna... and he's a stud. You know, he Mark Andrews. You know, Justice the... Hill is it's good. I, I get it, man. You know, they've got some there's, young guys there that are still gonna be around. Pieces that I don't really see going anywhere anytime soon. Now, offensive line. Maybe. I, I'm not sure, but Yeah, I'm not sure either. I mean I'm just throwing about just like I'm just talking variables in general. Like yeah. there's just a lot of variables in play and just like the efficiency he is showing. Um I, I it just it's we said this in in the quarterback uh preview show when we talked about Pat Mahomes, right? There's not been a quarterback to repeat the level of efficiency he has had back to back years. Ever. Not Tom Brady, not Peyton Manning, ever. Lamar's not going to do it again. Yes, he's got the legs to help keep his floor super high. Um, but again, like you just kind of wonder, like at some point, and it happens with every running quarterback, the coaches say, "Hey, let, let's bring it in just just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit more." It happens every year, right? Because they get older, their bodies start breaking down more. Now he's a young guy. Um, but you got to worry about that, like one hit, dude. These running quarterbacks, it's it's scary. Like the one hit toast. Um, yeah, but you got to hit him first. <laughs> that's true. He does not get hit a lot. It feels like. And when they try to hit him, he spins off of them like a, somebody's just sitting there pounding R two R two R two juking. You know? <laughs> circle, circle, circle. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, I don't know, man. I. I mean, I'm in the camp that I won't do it. Um, you know, once I really start breaking down next year's draft and things like that, maybe I'll get convinced that that he's worth, you know, that kind of value. I just don't buy it because I I think the quarterback. I mean, who would have thought Dak Prescott was going to be the number three quarterback this season, as far as average per game so far? I mean, if you go all the way back to the preseason and my quarterback preview article, I. I think I did highlight how good Dak would be. In, yeah, but uh, number three overall as far as points per game. Biting my tongue a bit because I'm <laughs> an Eagles and not a Cowboys fan, but uh, right. no, I didn't. I didn't predict him to be number three. Uh, right. I mean, like you know, Matt he Stafford. Was, he was you a, know, he was a popular sleeper pick. Yeah. But again, you could have gotten him super late, and you were perfectly fine. Um, you know, Matt Stafford before he had the back injury, he was killing it dude i i just i don't i don't buy this go into go go after quarterbacks early i don't care who it is it's just so hard to repeat that all of this is going to be cyclical because next year people are going to jump on lamar when they he was getting drafted what eight nine ten eleven last year or this year later in a lot of leagues Dak was getting drafted really late he's going to jump up you know, the Wilsons are still going to be high. The Watson is still going to be up there. Yeah, Rodgers better fall. Uh, Rodgers is going to drop he, like a rock, he dude. He sucks. You know, Josh Allen should jump up a little bit. Yep. Kirk, 
Cousins might jump up a little bit. You know, Mahomes is still going to be high. So there's still going to be people because of these other showings from quarterbacks that were drafted late this year, those guys are bo- moving up and then bumping all these other guys down. Yeah. So you're, no, you're I agree. Find value later. <clears throat> yeah. It's, it's just not going to be Lamar value in, in my opinion, personally. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's very interesting. You know, I, I didn't dig into all these guys to see how they finished in the, the very next year, but I know for a fact that that 2015 Cam Newton year was another one where like the, not the bottom fell out, but like he definitely did not repeat anywhere close to that. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I just, it seems to happen every single time. So, oh man. So I, I've got a little bit of a rant. If I can keep my voice in it for a little bit longer, excuse me one second. <coughs> Dude, so, so so the trade deadline just passed in just about every league. It might be open in, in some, but I think for the most part, trade deadline's gone. Um, so in one of my leagues, right, It's a, the, these are both dynasty leagues, keep in mind. Um, there was a trade went down. It was like the next to last place team has Dalvin Cook, right? The number two team uh, got got Dalvin Cook in a trade for, in my opinion, chump change. He sent the number two, the, the, the next to last place team, Tevin Coleman, who cares? Just a guy. Kelvin Harmon. We have literally no idea if this guy's going to be any good. Yeah, he made a phenomenal one hand to catch this past week, but like, uh, okay. And then a 2020 first round pick. Now keep in mind, this is the number two team. That sent him this pick. So it is the next to last pick in the first round. Yes, this draft is supposed to be stacked. But are you really finding a better replacement for Dalvin Cook at that point? I mean, Dalvin Cook, Dalvin Cook's young. He's awesome. And I asked the guy, he was just like, oh, you know, by the time my team is good again, Dalvin won't be there. And I'm like, I'm like, what? Dude, like. Uh, no, this is just wrong. You have no idea if the guy you're getting is going to be any good. Yeah. Da- Dalvin's played one in a quarter seasons, it feels like. So, like, he's got fresh legs. So, what are you talking about? Um, I don't know. Yeah. That trade just bothers me, man. I just... These bad trades just irritate the hell out of me. Like, be smarter than this, people. Yeah, I, am I overreacting to that trade? So it was Dalvin Cook for Campbell and Col- Coleman, Harmon, and a late first round pick next season. I mean, Coleman's a nobody. I mean, they're already like if everybody was healthy, he would split the backfield between four people. Um, yeah. Harmon, yes, <laughs> no, I I still think him, him and Breda healthy to me are, are kind of 1A, 1B there. Yeah, but still, like, if you look uh, at Coleman's season, like, it's been okay. Cook's the number yeah, two running back by a mile, bro. Like, well, obviously well, it's McCaffrey, I'm but... I'm doubting that. I'm just, I'm just trying to walk myself through it here. And that, I mean, I just... It's a rookie-only draft because of the dynasty, right? Yes. It's not, it's not anything other redraft, whatever. Yeah, I mean... You're losing the the next, you know, CMC in my mind. For, yeah, for I don't know if I go there, but yeah, it's thing. <sighs> well, he's he's right behind him in my mind as far as draft wise goes. Well, yeah, he's, yeah, I think next year, you know, like CMC is the number one easily, and then it's a mix and match between Cook, Saquon. And Zeke, and Kamara, I think will be a distant fifth. Yeah, I think he's leapfrogged Kamara at this point. Um, Zeke and Saquon, and not yet. So it's it's those those three, and then him as the top tier. Yeah, top of next tier. I don't know. But this trade was just like I mean, it just felt like he donated the number two team. I don't like it. And no. I mean, but- you you hate to say won and lost a trade, but oh, dude, I think he lost that trade. I just right hate now. the fact that like 
and, and I know in Dynasty, like, this is kind of how it works, right? But, like, get something back in return of value that's really going to help you, you know, yeah. next to immediately. You know, it, it's why why settle for, like, oh, question marks? Um, And, and you just throw the balance off of the league, too. Like, that's, that's my thing. With trades, like... I don't I don't like just tossing players out there and be like, oh, I'll just take whatever I get. I just want something because I don't want this guy anymore. If it means that like you're just you're basically handing a team a championship. Uh I I've never really enjoyed those types of trades. And I don't ever Yeah. Um I, I never I never offer trades like that. If I'm the team getting like the better, you know, getting the player who's gonna help me. I just never offer trades like that. Um yeah, now I say I that just- think it's gonna be I mean it's like yeah that's gonna help that guy basically seal the victory this year you know I don't think it hurts this guy at all do you think about it he gave up Tevin Coleman who gives a crap Calvin Harmon gives a crap and a 2020 late first rounder for Dalvin Cook I don't think it hurts this guy at all going forward he got a young stud running back who's probably going to be better than whoever gets picked in the late first round, and he's going to be better than Tevin Coleman, probably better than Tevin Coleman and whoever gets picked in that first round. That's where I'm like, what the hell? It just doesn't, it just yeah. doesn't make any sense to me. You legit hurt your team's future by, trading, by making this trade. Yeah. I, yeah. I think so. And I, I mean, I don't, I'm in a dynasty league now for the first time. Uh, well, first time ever actually for football. I don't think I've ever done dynasty in football, but I don't like, I just don't really care about my draft picks. I mean, I get that. This no, class, I don't, I don't either. I don't either. I get that this class is going to be great. What would he do? Like they're rookies. Like they're, they're still like, Hollywood Brown has had a really good season for a rookie, but he's been super inconsistent. Uh, Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the best rookie is Josh Jacobs. Yeah, arguably. Uh, So, yeah, I mean, it's it's this is crazy. Now, I say I don't, you know, do these trades where I'm giving up the best player by a mile and then, you know, taking back question marks. However, in a different dynasty league. I was trying to trade, and the guy I was trading with, I will not say his name, but he is in the industry. Uh, he's a big DFS player, also honestly a, obviously a big Dynasty season-long player. Uh, he was asking initially for Julian Edelman. Now, our team is... Me and Keenan share this team. Um, <clears throat> and we're... We're kind of on the fringe of like making the playoffs, but we were like, no, you know what? We're really not that good. Uh, we need to get rid of Julian Edelman while he's 34 years old and just clean house. So we already got rid of San- Emmanuel Sanders, who's already old and like breaking down, as we can see every single week. It's like a new injury. Um, so we got rid of him. Uh, now, so this this guy comes at us and he's like, oh, we want we want Julian Edelman. Okay. Uh, what what can you offer? Like we want picks or like prospects. You know, we're looking for the future. And we were like, we, you know, we'd like a second round pick for him if you, if you want that. I'm good with that yeah. at that point. Um, he comes back and he says, we'll give you Nikhil Harry. And I was like, ah, Nikhil Harry's a big question mark, but he was a, he was a good prospect. Fine. I'm good. And then he goes, you know what? Actually, that's too much. We want Edelman and Sanu and David Johnson for Moncrief and, and Harry and somebody else. We were like, and the other guy was like a total garbage player too. We were like, what? No, hey, what? You're not getting David Johnson. You're not buying David Johnson low from us. Um, I get that he looks like an 80 year old man at this point, but I'm banking on the fact that he's going to turn this around at least a little bit from what he's doing, and he's not going to be total poo next year. Um, I might be wrong, but I'm not selling for nothing. Because Moncrief is probably a cut candidate next season for us. Like, what does that do for us? Um, he's like, okay, well, so we finally like broke it down a little bit. We were like, okay, Edelman, Sanu, and or Cobb. Like, I ha- I'll happily throw in Cobb. Um, all three for Nikhil Harry. That felt like a no-brainer for him. 
in my opinion. Nikhil Harry, question mark, he's played two games. Um, yeah. Caught four passes total. Uh, Edelman is going to make him a favorite to win the league this year. Sanu, this was before Sanu was hurt, by the way. Uh, and Cobb's coming on strong. So he gets depth and you know a very good player who can help him this year in, in Edelman. Um, for Nikhil Harry, who is a legit question mark. Um, he was like, uh, no, I still want DJ thrown in. I, I don't want Sanu anymore. I want Edelman and DJ. And I was like, no. He goes, all right, well, what about Thielen? I'm like, what? <laughs> and he goes, well, Thielen's old. And I'm like, no. No. What? Now, I was surprised to find out that Thielen is 29 years old going on 30. I did not know. That. I did not know that. However, that is not old. He's got two, three, four years left of good production, in my opinion. So, like, no. Um, well, I, but he I just, had that same argument with uh, a guy in my dynasty league because he was trying to trade like everybody in the league he was trading with you know and and he's had some good ones go through um that that helped him out and got him what he needed and and then you know he was kind of trying to just build draft picks but he's like looking at like well yeah, like I don't, I don't want this guy or that guy, and I'm like, okay, well, you know, he's 30 years old. I'm like, yeah, he's 30 years old. He's a receiver. Receivers don't get beat up anywhere near as much as any other offensive player, right? That is is going to be drafted in dynasty. Their their, you know, window of opportunity is way longer. And you know, I I gave the example of Edelman. And I said, well, look at Edelman. He's, what, 34? And think about Thielen and Edelman comparison, right? They're kind of the – Edelman's a much you know, smaller slot yeah. back guy, but Thielen kind of plays that inside. Now, he does play a little outside too, but um, yeah. the comparison is there to where like those guys can last. Now, Thielen's got the hamstring injury, and that's not helping this case right now, but – I don't know, man. To me, it's just like this guy was just trying to fleece me, and I was getting really annoyed at him. Like, yeah, like what are you? He, he, honestly, though, he's done it to a few people in the league where he's completely trade raped them, um, and it, it's it's really annoying. And you kind of like you talk to him afterwards, and he just laughs, and you're like, "Why are you a jackass? Like, don't be." I don't know. To me, like, I don't want to be the guy who just like takes advantage of people who are worse than me and don't know what they're doing, and just dominates the league because people are stupid but he tries to pull that crap over on me and keenan and we were like no fuck off dude we basically did we told him like no you're not getting two top 20 receivers and or you know david johnson for one rookie who's played two games and last week he had played one game before we before we talked to him you know before we you know decided to say no so like yeah I was like, you're out of your mind, dude. So, I don't know. Just be smart, people. Guys, like, just, you know, it, it's all supposed to be fun. I get you want to win. Uh, you know, this league, like, there's really not that much money on, on the on the line. I, I don't see why it's fun to just – because what ends up happening, and, and it's happening – it's happened in other, you know, happening in like my dynasty baseball league, right? Now this was because nobody drafted very well. My team just accumulated so much talent. There was a legit talk before I kind of changed some rules around to kind of even things out as commish. Um, there was legit talk that they were going to shut down the league or they wanted to like reboot because I accumulated yeah. so much talent off of the draft and off of waivers, etc., that they were just annoyed with it. So it was just kind of like, uh, I don't know. It's not fun to just dominate the league over and over and over again. It is fun to like make it competitive, but we should move on. All right, man. Um, let's give some injury talk. Um, yeah. yeah, I can rip through some of these if you want. Yeah, uh, go ahead, man. All right, so quarterbacks, uh, not, not necessarily an injury, but Andy Dalton. As back as the Cincy starter, um, he 
I don't even know the guy's name that was in place of him. Uh, so that probably isn't good for me. But Finley, <laughs> I was like, I know, I know the hell his name. It's right there. The Finley experiment is over, and Cincinnati is still uh, defeated. So they're going back to Dalton, and I guess that was good enough for them. Um, Jeff Driscoll is a game time decision. Um, but I actually yeah no I wrote these notes this afternoon. Right. Driscoll's out. They're gonna play. Yeah, I, was gonna say, I don't even know yeah, the guy who's playing. The, the rookie is going to start the game for them. Um, yeah, un, undrafted rookie David uh, Blau will yeah. start a quarterback for the Lions tomorrow. Uh, Driscoll will serve as his backup. Uh, he's got a hamstring injury that he's been dealing with, so. I mean, he's only going like to play if he gets hurt, so it's yeah, bad, well, man. This, right. Um, this is on from two hours ago from Michael Rothstein, ESPN staff writer. So, yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens there. Um, yeah, I mean, Galladay and Jones, honestly, in my opinion, they drop pretty oh, yeah. far in the rankings. Like, I, I honestly, I, I hope you have better options than, than them. I, I don't want to start either one of them. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so what, uh, I mean, with Dalton back, though, it's getting, get, let's go back to that for a second because I totally missed this other side note there. Mixon was starting to get a heavy workload with Finley. So do you think that continues with Dalton back or does Mixon just kind of fall back into obscurity? From the earlier season days. Yeah, I don't know, man. Um, I want to believe that the coaching staff knows that they got to run this offense through Mixon. They, they've probably seen enough at this point. Um, I mean, Dalton can command the offense a little bit better. Um, the the move did kind of shock me. Like, I never really thought that Finley gave them the better chance to win. Um, so, I, I, I want to believe that they're going to give Mixon the same kind of workload. Um but it's kind of a it's kind of a wait and see, honestly, at this point. We just don't really know. I mean, all we can go on is the fact that he wasn't getting this workload when Dalton was in there the entire early part of the season. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see see what happens there, obviously. Um, I'm hoping that he continues to play well, so we'll find out. Uh, but as I said, Driscoll, game time decision. Uh, we already talked about Galladay, Jones dropping. So let's move on to running backs here. Um, the Chase Edmonds is likely to play this week, apparently. So, I, who who is the Arizona running back that you want to play at this point? Knowing this, <laughs> it's not David Johnson. That's for damn sure. Um, I mean, I think it's going to be a bit of a split workload between Edmonds and and uh, Drake at this point, but um. It's just kind of, I don't know. It, it's honestly still like there's there's so many unknowns at this point because we haven't seen those two healthy in the same games, so. Yeah. So, yeah, Johnson. I, I think I actually dropped DJ today, in my one Yahoo league. I just, I'm over it. I'm I'm tired of wasting a roster spot on somebody that isn't playing. And I need to – I'm in the playoffs right now, but I still need to win this week. Um, so I went and – I don't even remember who the hell I picked up, honestly. Uh, that's how bad it was. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, I picked up uh, Benny Snell because he was sitting out there. and sounds like he's going to potentially get some more work now. So, yeah, Connor's out at least another week or two, it seems like. So, yeah, we'll get to so that here. He, he, for whatever reason, passed through waivers, uh, which I was kind of surprised about. Um, but it looks like somebody also picked up uh, Singletary after the fact. But I like, I like Snell's upside better, honestly. So, all right, what else we got here? Uh, Marlon Mack. Uh, hand issue still out. Damien Williams has not practiced uh, so far this week. He is dealing with that rib injury that he suffered last week. 
his outlook does not look good uh, for for this weekend to play. Uh, so that gives basically McCoy and Daryl um, Williams and Daryl Williams the the splits there. Uh, maybe a little bit of Darwin. Who knows? Nah. Uh, <laughs> Doubtful, but uh, I mean, Daryl Williams has been the most trusted back there, so um, I, I think he'll end up getting a, a good amount this weekend as well. Uh, Jordan Howard still not practicing with a shoulder injury. Uh, James Connor we just mentioned it's a little longer regarding his shoulder injury, and uh, Matt Breda, who we talked about a little bit earlier, he did return to practice, but. He's facing the Ravens this yeah. week at home. I'll take the receivers here if you don't mind. Uh, not, not really so we, looking forward to that. Yeah. Uh, so we got so we got Julio Jones shoulder. He's going to be a game time decision Thursday night, everybody. So keep an eye on that one. Kind of looking like on the wrong side of out, um, on the wrong side of questionable. I mean, so uh, definitely a big blow to that offense. Helps the New Orleans defense. Uh, helps Calvin Ridley. It's at least as long as Marshawn Lattimore is out. Uh, if Marshawn Lattimore is in and on Ridley, yikes. Um, Tyreek Hill looking like he'll play. Mike Williams was limited today. There's really no saying why. It could have just been like a rest day or something. Um, Adam Thielen still not practicing. They apparently uh, something scared them on Monday because there initially was talk that he was going to be good and then like, Something made him freak out, and he's not practicing still. Um, Julian Edelman and Mohamed Sanu are both limited. Um, I expect Edelman to play. He's been questionable like all year long. Um, I'm unsure about Sanu. Seems like he's not going to. Uh, Golden Tate is in the concussion protocol. Um, apparently, he got the concussion like making the catch, his touchdown catch last week. Um, like maybe the way he fell or something. I didn't really see the play, so it kind of stinks, though. Hunter Renfro, he's out with broken ribs. Apparently, it's broken ribs and like a punctured lung. Um, I, I've seen people come back yeah. like crazy quick from that, but that just seems super scary. I don't know how people can do that. Um, Nelson Aguilar and Alshon Jeffrey are both expected back. Question for you, man. Does it matter? I mean, they are playing Miami. I mean, do we suddenly like his offense this week? <laughs> No. They've been uh, broken all year, dude. It's been awful. I I don't care if they're playing Miami. I'm it's playing super Miami high hopes for this team. So the the reverse psychology works against me in the <laughs> game. Yeah, and uh, last for receivers here, we got Juju no longer in the concussion protocol, but he still did not practice because he's got that knee injury as well. So you can't forget about that. So he's no lock to play. Um. Couple tight ends here. We got David Njoku. He is eligible to return this week, but it hasn't been decided yet. Uh, T.J. Hawkinson. He's also uh, he's got a shoulder injury. I wrote down that he's likely to play. I feel like I'm at the right unlikely. I'm not really sure. Uh, Eric Ebron. He's out for the season. And uh, Evan Ingram is still not practicing, so not a good sign there. Zach Ertz randomly popped up on the injury report today with a hamstring injury. So I mean. I'd rather have Zach Ertz and Alshon and uh, Aguilar for, for me, but um, it's just more bad news for the Eagles, dude. And then yeah. uh, Delaney Walker has been placed on the season-ending IR. Finally, he's been out for a good while here, so it's been uh, – uh, who knows if this is the last time we'll see Walker. Hopefully, hopefully it isn't he's a good player, man. All right, so we want to have a little fun. Uh, you know, we usually do our – our week 13 picks, but with Turkey Day being tomorrow, uh, and, you know, Fox and CBS and everybody, they like to give out their little awards, the uh, the Turkey Leg Awards and the, I don't forget what CBS does, like some sort of, like, iron trophy or something, I forget. Um, we're going to give out some beer awards. So uh, we're going to do Growler for best individual defensive player um 12 pack for standout offensive player and then we're going to do a case for the best overall team you know something they can share um not that you can't share a 12 pack and you probably should but uh yeah so (laughs) 
So let's start with the growler, man. Defense. What um what do you what are you feeling here for defensive performances? Uh or performance. I will have to go with Mr. Khalil Mack and Mr. Kyle Fuller from the Bears. Oh, we're getting we're getting a combo award. All right. It happens a lot, so I, I get it. Yeah, well yeah, I mean I, I, I think they're both just gonna have solid uh solid games here i mean it's just gonna be it's just gonna be ugly for detroit and i do usually like detroit on thanksgiving but not not against this defense and not with a rookie quarterback an undrafted rookie quarterback nonetheless i i feel you man Had, had i made these notes uh after the news came out like you did that driscoll wasn't playing i probably would have picked khalil mack or Kyler Fuller, like one of those guys. But instead, I went with Cameron Jordan, plays for the Saints, going to go against Atlanta, and, you know, they got totally shut down uh, a couple weeks ago when these guys played. Atlanta just came to play and stuck it to them. Um, so I think there's going to be a little bit of comeback here, a little revenge. Cameron Jordan's going to get a strip sack fumble, touchdown, I think, um, and that's going to seal it for him. Yeah. Yeah, so what, I definitely with Jordan pick too. That's a always a solid option there. Um, so for my twelve pack, I standout am, offensive player. What's that? Standout uh, offensive player. I'm just reminding people listening oh, what the hell we're talking about. <laughs> I am going to stick with that Saints and Falcons game, and I'm going to go with uh, Callum Ridley. Um, All right, so you're banking on Marshawn Lattimore not playing. <laughs> I, yeah, a little bit of that, and also potentially Julio. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Shoulder injury. So, um, I, I mean, just looking at at what Ridley's done the past two weeks alone against division opponents, as we talked about last week, uh, eight targets. Eight receptions, one forty-three and a touchdown against Carolina. And then fourteen targets, only managed six receptions, but still eighty-five yards and a touchdown last week against Tampa Bay. Um, he didn't really do that well against New Orleans three weeks ago, but he only had five targets and three catches. So I definitely think he's going to exact a little revenge this week. I feel you. Uh, so mine's going to be, I mean, maybe I went chalk, but I don't see how you can blame me. Michael Thomas, I, you know, I don't believe that the Falcons defense is as good as it has been uh, the last couple of weeks. And I think Michael Thomas is going to come out to play on Thanksgiving and, and you know, just do Michael Thomas things, man. Like 10 catches, 120 yeah. yards and touch or two, you know, like he's just going to dominate. Yeah, he's he's just awesome this year. I mean, he really should be in the MVP talk a little he bit. He is more. a little bit, but he ain't going to get it. Same way as McCaffrey. It, well, yeah. I mean, it's it's hard. It's a quarterback. It's a quarterback it's award. Quarterback, so. yeah. All right, what do you got for Case? Best overall team. My Case award is just going to go with... Undrafted rookie quarterback equals time to feast on Turkey Day. Do it. Do it. Uh, man, I, I hope their offense can can back that up. I'm just, I'm not feeling their offense at all. Um, but uh, yeah, but I hear you, man. If I had to. Uh, pick some sort of a like call it the Zima with a sour apple Jolly Rancher award for the worst performance it would go to probably Mitchell Trubisky and Chicago's offense uh, or the Detroit offense that's going to be totally crappy well yeah it's, <laughs> it's kind of a toss up between the two but uh, I, I don't know this this could easily turn into like a nine to six game Ugh. Or a 13-7. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right, man. So mine is going to be, I'm going to stick with my theme of all the Saints and go with the New Orleans Saints. Best team. I think they want their revenge. Uh, Michael Thomas, obviously going to ball out. The defense is going to ball out. Uh, Kamara is going to finally get back into action here. You know, he's looking okay, but not like not Kamara like. Um, I just I think it's going to be a big game from the Saints, man, all around. Yeah. So, all right, man, let's finish some things off here quickly with with our Week 13 picks. Um, I'll start up here with the highest scoring game. I'm going Vikings and Seattle. Um, like might shock some people because I think you know you think the Vikings defense. And it's not going to be, you know, super high scoring on either side. But, you know, Seattle was kind of shut down last week by the Eagles defense, kind of shockingly. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, they'll get back in gear. They've been good even against good defenses. Um, they're just, you know, Russell Wilson's just Russell Wilson, right? Uh, and the Vikings offense has been good this year, even without Thielen. So, and Seattle's defense is, you can score on them. So there's yeah, I just think this could be a pretty high scoring game that might surprise some people. What are you looking at? Yeah. Oh yeah. So I'm looking at Mr. Lamar Jackson and the Ravens versus the Forty Niners. Um you know, we've seen the Ravens, like we said, already go in and beat up on a ton of really good teams, um, really over the last five weeks. So we'll see if they can do it again. I mean, they're going to be tough at home. That's a bold call, be, man. It's a bold it's, call. It's going to be an amped up, amped up uh, crowd here in Baltimore. And is it in Baltimore? Or is it in San Fran? No, it's it's here. Huh, interesting. I didn't know that. Yes, he wrote it the opposite on the. No, I didn't. On the sheet. We need to do verses. 49ers. The team on the right's the home team. Just telling you. All right. Anyway. No. If it if the team on the right was the home team, then it would say Ravens <clears throat> at 40. Okay. All right. We'll argue about that later. Anyway. Yeah. It's a bold call, man. I don't know. Um sorry if I I thought I was on mute. I think I sneezed into the damn microphone about two minutes ago. So apologize for that, everybody. Um so my lowest scoring game is going to be Eagles at Dolphins. Um, this Eagles offense, even with being potentially fully healthy, I just don't believe in it. Um, and the the Dolphins aren't looking awesome. You know, they they put up some points here and there, but not consistently enough to to be anything that you want to trust. And the Eagles have shockingly looked pretty solid on defense. You know, if anything. This is the defense I want to start this week. You know, I want to stream the, the Eagles defense. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, but we're talking more offensive players at this point when we do the highs and lows scoring fantasy games. Yeah. So, yeah, what's yours? All right. So, mine, I'm going with Colts versus Titans. Um, just not a lot to, to really love about this game. Uh, I mean,. Look back to uh, to week two, and the, the final was nineteen to seventeen, Indy over Tennessee. So, hey man, I think don't knock that Ryan Tannehill. Close to that, I mean, it might be like 21, 23 to to seventeen, maybe twenty three twenty, something like that. It's it's going to be a low scoring game though. Yeah, like I said, man, Ryan Tannehill has been pretty damn good. So yeah, he's peace. Don't, don't knock on him. Over and and been much better than Mariota. So yes, yes he has. It hasn't been. That wasn't hard to do. That's not hard to do. <laughs> no, Mariota's been pretty trash, unfortunately. Yeah. All right, man. Sleepers here. Quarterbacks. I'm going Baker Mayfield. I mean, this dude's been kind of balling out the last couple of weeks. Um, 22 and 25 fantasy points. Uh, before that, I believe it was 17 and 18. So you know that's not that's nothing, man. But I saw him on the fantasy pros rankings down at like twenty two, like what? That seems really low. Um, I just I can't buy that there's twenty one quarterbacks better than him this week. This offense is clicking. I get that you know Pittsburgh's got a pretty stingy D, and this is going to be a pretty <laughs> this might be a really ugly game. 
Um, both teams are going to be pretty fired up after the last time they played, obviously. But, yeah. uh, you know, you just hope that, like, nothing bad happens and this doesn't get out of hand and, and Baker could just do Baker things. So what you got? Uh, I'm going back to your highest scoring game, and I'm going with uh, Mr. Mr. Kirk Cousins. He's been very good in his last three games. Um, I mean, he's been really good overall this season, but really stepped it up the last three weeks. And, you know, two of those games included road games at Kansas City and at Dallas. So two other tough teams, you know, probably playoff bound teams. I think Cousins is going to gonna step up to the plate here today as well. Yeah, not a bad choice. Obviously, I agree. Uh, my running back here, I'm going Jamal Williams for the Green Bay Packers. Um, just sitting outside the top 30 for running backs. Um, and they get the Giants, and you know, I just think this is going to be a game where like they're not going to have to rely so much on Aaron Jones. Um, they can just dump the ball off to Jamal. You know, he catches, you know, catching all those balls at the backfield, especially in PPR, half PPR leagues. You know, really makes a big difference for his fantasy score. So, I think he can be. You know, a decent RB three at the very least. You know, flex type of guy. Yeah, um, I'm gonna go with your lowest scoring fantasy game here. And All right, man. I feel actually, like we're on the same page today. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Ajayi. I, you know, I, it it was kind of some slim pickings where I was looking for these guys, but you know, he should be even more involved this week. The Eagles have a nice easier matchup than, than Seattle. And this is his former team that, you know, traded him to the Eagles. So I think there'll, there'll be a little bit of that revenge factor in there as well. Yeah. You just got to hope so he gets enough work. I'm, I'm hoping for some, some bigger things out of, uh, out of Jay. Yeah. Week. He just got to hope he gets more work. I think he only got like six cut- touches last week. So yeah, he um, get enough. he's definitely got to get more than that to be relevant. Um, so my receiver here is Larry Fitz uh, sitting outside the top 40 receivers Arizona's offense has looked good, even in tough matchups. Uh, so, you know, I know f- a lot of people left Fitz out to die, you know, uh, after he had a, a bad stretch of games there. Uh, but he's, he's picked it back up, you know, nothing fantastic. But, uh, I mean, did we see the Rams just get humiliated? That secondary just isn't very good, dude. The defense that passed the, you know, the front seven, which um, obviously got handled pretty easily by – by the by the Ravens, um, I think Kyler Murray and, and company is going to be able to take advantage of that as well. Yeah. Yeah, so, so I have Chris Conley from the Jacksonville. Yeah, he was Pittsburgh. one of my guys. I like that pick. Tampa Bay's pass defense is horrendous. That That's all I need Done. to Done. Done. All right, let's move on to some busts. So my bust here. Going green or going uh, some turkey day picks here. I'm going Dak Prescott facing this Bills defense. Cooper hasn't looked healthy. Um, you know, Zeke's not getting it done like he has. I know Dak's, you know, in the discussion for MVP, but it hasn't been awesome for him, um, especially last week. And there's a lot of questions around surrounding this team. I think the pressure is there. And this is, you know, Dallas does one of two things at this time of the year with all these questions, right? They either rally around it and they play lights out or they crumble. And I don't know what, why my gut's telling me like this team's crumbling. Um, um, you know, unless Cooper can get healthy, which pains me to say, because I just don't really like Amari Cooper, but he obviously is a difference maker for this offense. Um, I don't see Dak having a good a good game against the Bills, and even with Cooper healthy, I'm not sure he will. Yeah. So, uh, just picking up on what you were talking about with uh, Fitz, I don't think Murray is going to have a great game um, against the Rams. He's definitely not going to pull a Lamar. Um, I don't even think he's going to pull half a Lamar, honestly. Well. He's been very Lamar had down like this year. He's, 50 points, but he's sure. had some good games, but I'm just not seeing it. I think the Rams are going to have to come out and really, you know, 
show that they're done licking their wounds from from Monday night. Hey, if Kyler can do it against San Fran twice, by the way, I think he can do it against the Rams. That's all I'm saying. Uh, So my running back here is Chris Carson going against my highest scoring game, but I'm kind of legit worried about Chris Carson here. You know, I hope I'm wrong. I've got him in like a few leagues, Um, you know, but Rashad Penny had a great game last week and it would just be one thing if like they were just riding the hot hand. But, you know, Pete Carroll came out and said that he's going to keep Penny involved. There's no reason not to at this point. So, yeah, he's also facing that, that stout Minnesota defense. I mean, if he doesn't get his 20 touches, 20 carries, whatever it is, I don't see Carson doing a whole lot, you know, unless he just falls in the end zone once or twice. That would be the only thing that would save his day. Yeah, I, I was actually going to pick. Carson myself for this one and then I saw you had him down I was like ah shit <laughs> so I will uh, I will go back to that Tampa uh, Jacksonville game and I'm gonna go with Mr. Um, I'm gonna go with Mr. Leonard Fournette uh, just Tampa Bay's rush defense is super stout they're, they're not easy to run on much easier to pass on, as already said. So, I can see a little bit of a down game here for for Fournette. Yeah, I can buy into that. Um, so, my receiver, I'll keep this one short. Amari Cooper. See my description on deck. Yes. <laughs> done and done. Yep. Um, mine. I'm going with uh, I'm going with D Hop. New England D backs are just. Too freaking crazy. Um, I know Hopkins finally had a really good game last week and kind of came out and balled out, but I don't see a repeat performance this week. Yeah, if he gets Gilmore on him, <laughs> look out, man. Um, yeah. Put a zero up on Amari last week. That's, that's hard to do. Um, all right, man, so defenses. I'm going, you know, I would have obviously picked the Jets, but uh, they kind of crept over that 40 point percent line they're, they're nearing 50 at this point um so i'm going if we're going to keep that that below 40 percent i'm going with the packers uh they're playing the giants you know the the packers haven't been as good as they were early on and i, I don't think anybody really believed that that was the true packers defense um but you know going against the giants this is a, that's an offense that you can pick on and so i i like that pick yeah definitely uh definitely a solid pick there um, I think that I will go ahead and go with Tennessee. Um, already talked about how I think this is going to be a lower scoring game. Uh, they only gave up 19 points to Indy in the first matchup back in week two. They had three sacks, they had an interception, had a fumble recovery. Um, you know, Indy's offense I feel like has been playing a little bit of sloppy ball lately as well so I think they can take advantage of that and still have a, a good showing and, and what should be a pretty defensive battle cool I like it I'm in uh, that's it for the show um, again happy Thanksgiving everyone hope you listen hope your Thanksgiving is good friends family football food man that's what it's all about um, Absolutely. So, uh, good luck in your leagues, and hit us up on uh, Twitter and check out the site fantasysixpack.net. See y'all next week. Peace. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Wrong song, man. It's not a Thanksgiving song. <laughs>